Now, the imposition of a liability is sufficient to drive a currency. It will drive the currency. It will ensure there will be a demand for the currency, up to the amount you must pay to uh, absolve yourself of your debt. Okay? If it's a tax debt, enough to pay your taxes. You will have that, at least that much demand for the currency. Will you demand more than that? Probably. Okay, why? Because you're going to have owe taxes next year. So it is very useful to have more than you need to pay this year. Okay? We do not claim that state money and taxes or other kinds of obligations are necessary to drive a money. But historically, there are very few examples. So just as one, one apparent example, so I ask the question, how did the banks all get together and choose the same unit of account? Well, almost always, I can say virtually without exception, they use a state money. Virtually without exception. Okay? And probably having a legal system that backs it up and that enforces liabilities denominated in that money of account plays a big role in getting them to do that. I do know of one possible exception to this rule, and that was in Northern Europe in uh, the Middle Ages. The banks got together and set up a, a Banca di Giro in which they had their own clearing unit, and they were operating across uh, state lines. They needed a unit of account that was not associated with any state for clearing, and so they seemed to have created one. Okay. That is an exception. But that was uh, substantially a barter economy. I mean, they, they had this means of exchange, which wasn't really, it was a only means of exchange, money as means of exchange. Well, it's not, it's not barter, it's a means of clearing between banks. Okay? So within, within each nation, you had a currency, and there's transactions going on. You have bills of exchange written in currencies that cross state lines. Okay, and so you would have, let's say, Italian bills of exchange in France, okay, which require payment in lira. But the banks got together and seemed to have created this unit of account that they could use to clear with each other. So you could submit it to a bank and you wouldn't have to get lira. You could get the, the uh, Giro unit of account. Okay? So, this seems to be true. I'm not an expert on this. I read a bit about it 35 years ago. It's, it seems to, it, to be a counterexample to the normal situation is in which banks use the unit of account of the country in which they are operating. Okay, which makes sense. Uh, so far as um, individuals choosing to refuse their own state money account, in their own private transactions. That occurs, especially like in Latin America. It's very common uh, even to write contracts in US dollars. Even though you have your own currency, some contracts like real estate contracts will be written in dollar terms. You might actually make the payments in the domestic currency, but the contracts are in dollars. Why did they do that? Inflation. It was to get a more stable money of account in which to write these very large contracts protect themselves from inflation in their own currency. Okay? But again, that doesn't in any way uh, uh, dispute modern money theory. Okay? The dollar still is a state money account. And it can be used outside the United States. Okay? It's a state money account. And it can be used for individual transactions. But even banks can offer you bank accounts denominated in the dollar money of account. Okay, even in Italy, right? You can have a dollar deposit account at your bank. Um, but it's still the same money. It's still consistent with our 